What's up everybody, Jack here from Half Chrome. This is the Xiaomi Fimi X8 Mini, and I've done a video already kind of comparing it to this here, the DJI Mini 2. But today, what I'd like to do is take a closer look at the Fimi Mini here, talk about some of the pros and cons of this drone, as well as kind of walk you through the app, right? A lot of people are asking, you know, can we learn more about this app and the flight modes that this drone has? So we're gonna do that today, stay tuned. Now the Mini 2 is a good comparison or a good place to start when you're thinking about the Femi here. So let's talk about what are some of the pros and cons of getting this Femi instead of one of the DJI drones. As you see here, it is of course a foldable small compact drone, hence Mini. It's got a real three axis gimbal, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, some quick specs on this drone, you have a range of 8,000 meters. That's uh, about five miles. You got a flight time of 30, 31 minutes, which is certainly pretty darn good. Um, this camera is 4K on a three axis gimbal. Um, it'll do 4K at 30 frames a second. You can get 120 frames a second at 720, which is also pretty cool. Now, the big advantage of having a mini drone like one of these is if it's under 250 grams, you don't have to register with the FAA. You can save yourself five bucks and it's not subject to remote ID when that law comes into effect. This drone here shipped with the standard battery, which puts it at 260 grams, which means if I really wanna fly this thing, I'm going to have to register it. Now, you can get the Pro battery and use that with this, and that'll bring the weight down under 250 grams, and that's what I suggest you do. So first, let's talk about reasons why you want this and not something else. First, it's Xiaomi product, which is a decent company, but it's also not DJI. Everybody has a DJI drone. DJI dominates the industry, and maybe for good reason, but some people just like to, you know, fight the man. This? Definitely not a DJI product, certainly going to be different. So if you want something different, this is a decent place to start. Now, the second thing on my pro list is the color. A lot of people, and actually more people, tended to like the color coming out of this drone um, over the Mini 2, just kind of out of the box. Now, yes, you can tweak things to your liking, but a lot of people really like this. I think that's kind of a personal preference, but either way, it's pretty darn good. The third thing, this thing is definitely cheaper. Now they're both listed retail for 50 uh, or so, uh, but generally speaking, this is less than $400. Right now we have a coupon code in the description down below for $380. I've seen it a little bit cheaper than that even, uh, but DJI is not putting their products on sale. So you can get this a little bit cheaper than a mini. But probably the biggest advantage that this drone has over the mini series of drones is that you can use this in follow me mode. If you wanna track a subject, this has some active track features, which is really nice, right? So there are more flight modes on this, also has waypoints, right? You're not gonna fly waypoints on a DJI mini drone. So this has additional flight modes uh, going for it that the minis just don't. Okay, so my first con on the list is actually kind of my first pro on the list. It's not a DJI product, and it's not that I love DJI, but I know that they make quality products, and their quality control is probably second to none, especially in the drone industry. So there are a handful of issues that you're gonna get when you have a smaller company. My second con, kind of goes to that, the gimbal issues. I was kind of getting gimbal blips. Um, I've seen that, um, and I also getting horizon tilt, right? So uh, those are common issues that people have reported with some of these drones. Now, firmware tends to uh, fix some of those issues, but you're gonna have to wait for that to happen. Now, it doesn't happen all the time, but it's kind of annoying when it does, and it's gonna ruin one of those shots. Third con, availability. These things are not super easy to come by. You're not gonna run to your local Walmart and pick one up, and you're not gonna buy it on Amazon. My last con is the weight, right? Um, I don't quite get the whole standard versus pro battery thing, why it's a thing. I mean, I guess what they did is they built this drone, and ended up a little overweight, or maybe they couldn't get the batteries um, in time to ship the drones. They didn't want them waiting around. Either way, um, really somebody should have figured that out and shaved 10 grams before they shipped the standard batteries with these things and put it a measly 10 grams overweight. I mean, 10 grams is not a lot. You know, you could do a little bit of work yourself and get it under 250 grams, 
but that is super obnoxious to me that it ships at 260 grams with the standard battery. Yes, you can buy a pro battery. I just can't go down the street and pick one up at the local store. Um, I gotta order it and wait for it to get here. So that is a little bit obnoxious as well. All right, let's get this thing outside and dive into the app and take a look at the interface that you're gonna use with this drone. All right, so I'm outside with my Xiaomi Fimi X8 Mini. A little quick pro tip. Uh, this case is actually the ZLL108 case. A little bit cheaper. Pretty much any of these mini drones, um, if you want to pick up a case, they're they're kind of interchangeable, right? Um, you can see I just shoved it right in there. It works pretty darn well. I'd rather have a case for this guy than that one anyway. Um, all right, so here we have it. Let's get it all set up. Gimbal guard off. I'm sorry, front legs then back legs grab your controller get your antennas up you gotta worry about the sticks in the bottom then you grab the right connection cable uh, you need a USB-C to whatever kind of phone you have I'm using an iPhone so that's what I need I'm gonna go ahead and power up the remote I believe it's a double press you get some blinking and a double press. Turn on the drone. Tap it a hold, actually. And she comes to life. Now I'm screen recording this all on my phone. I'm going to go ahead and tap the Femi Navi Mini app. And I'm going to slide. I'm going to plug my phone in here. I'm going to slide it in. Uh, you kind of put the back end in first. Um, and kind of that plug fits into that hole there. Then you open up the remote, kind of get it into place. It automatically starts recording. Stop that. We're just going to give it a minute to pick up those GPS satellites. You can see um, it's kind of a different style remote with the phone in the middle. This is a big phone too. This is a, an iPhone 8 plus or pro whatever the larger one is um, you can see it kind of pulls my hands out a little bit more than I'm, I'm probably used to but you know it seems to be okay I currently have 10 satellites we're gonna wait till it goes green just went green ready to go GPS so all right before we take off let's walk through some of these uh, settings and menus and take a look and see what we're dealing with here all right, so looking across the top, we can just see some information. It's ready to go, GPS, zero feet high, zero feet away. Um, it's not moving because I haven't taken off yet. I can see that I have uh, 10 satellites. I have good RC link, uh, good video link. I've got a full battery, 98%, and I've got that gear wheel. All right, I'm getting my pre-flight check. Um, all right, pre-flight check. Um, and that's a setting in here. You can turn that off if you want. Um, but return home height 98 feet fail safe is return to home that's important uh if if i was indoors i probably want to set it to hover or land uh, i can see my battery i am on mode 2 my sd card has plenty of storage so i'm good to go there important parameter all right other things uh, my other limits uh speed flight uh, my top speed 18 miles an hour i can actually bump that up to 35 all right, so if I just kind of want to limit, actually this is really nice. I was thinking about, I kind of wish I could change the top speed of the Bugs 19 I was flying the other day. Um, but we'll leave it right there towards the, the shorter end. Uh, limit of flight distance. All right, let's... Okay, local laws. Uh, we're going to just turn that off. Limit of flight height, we'll leave that on. Return to home flight height, I like. Beginner mode off, sport mode off precise landing on uh, that'll just look for a uh, landing pad as you go down drone indicator so you see the drone on the map amount of magnetic interference all right it's good to know calibrate my compass fail safe home point um, dynamic home point and smart track enable backwards flying and smart track um, Remember, there are no obstacle avoidance uh, sensors on this thing, so if you're going to enable it to fly backward or just even tracking in general, make sure you know what you're doing. All right, and then gain and expo tuning and sensitivity. That's going to change how the sticks work, so I suggest you don't worry about that unless you know what you're doing. All right, uh, let's cancel. We'll do the firmware update later. I remember reading it had something to do um, 
with an issue that I wasn't having, right? So I wasn't gonna bother uh, with that. All right, um, so that's some of the information there. I've got a takeoff button on the left. I've got my map in the lower left-hand corner. I've got my photo and video button in the upper right-hand corner. Um, and then I have some different options. So I have my video options, I have my uh, pictures if I want to look at them, and then my smart modes um, in the lower right-hand corner. All right. Um, I also have some information. It tells me the angle of the gimbal on the bottom, uh, my exposure value, uh, what I'm shooting in. This is 4K30 and my SD card. All right. Now, all right. So now we're going to take a look at the settings here. Now, uh, I kind of goes through them if you have it set to uh, safety pre-checks that it just kind of goes through a lot of the, the initial settings here of uh, Oregon so we've already kind of gone through this first menu here with the little quadcopter uh, if we look at the camera settings now we can change some things quick parameters right um, do I want full manual um, or do I want auto we're gonna go manual for a second video size let's check out our options 4k 30 25 24 2.7 um, now I have up to 60 frames a second there 1080 I get 90 frames a second and 720 I have up to uh, 120 frames a second so if you're doing slow-mo you know keep in mind how slow you're gonna make it how many frames do you need all right um, then we've got some stick calibrations again I wouldn't mess with that unless you really don't like the way that it's set up and you know what you're doing all right then we've got some gimbal uh, settings that you can mess around with you know how fast do you want the gimbal to go um, and then advanced settings. All right, uh, adjusting it. Hmm, interesting. And gimbal gain. Um, so again, I don't suggest you deal with those. Uh, our battery cycles one. That's not accurate. Uh, so that's interesting. Maybe, uh, maybe because of uh, firmware update on this battery, that could make sense. Uh, low battery warning at 30%. Okay. Actually, what are my options? I can't go any lower than that, so that's fine. You don't, generally don't want to go lower than 30% because um, that'll that'll cause your batteries not to last quite as long. All right, and then that those last three dots. Ah, there's my pre-flight check. Um, so I didn't spell check that, but um, that that is kind of the it maybe kind of go through some of the settings in the beginning because I had that on I'm gonna leave that on so flight records if you sign into Xiaomi you can uh, have them kind of hold all that info for you I don't, I don't do that um, uh, units Imperial or metric we're here in the US where we use stupid feet instead of meters that make sense but uh, you know if I don't use Imperial I'll have to try and do conversions in my head and that's not always the greatest idea Firmware update, I do know, know I need that. Maintenance mode live, Wi-Fi manager. Okay. All right, so let's switch. Actually, while we're in uh, video mode, let's tap on that. Take a look at some of the video modes that we have. We've got normal, we've got HDR, and we've got uh, time lapse. I do generally like HDR video, uh, but some people don't. You, you know, you got to kind of test and see how that looks for you. Um, and then we have some quick shots. Uh, we got to take off for quick shots, and we have panorama. All right, um, which you have to take them all um, and then uh, synthesize them later. Okay, so we have horizontal, vertical, and wide angle there. All right, Oops. and it automatically switched me into camera mode uh, when I tap that because it's obviously a photo option. So I'm going to go into camera mode, um, tap on that, and take a look at some of the camera settings that we have. All right, so we've got normal, we've got super night. Um, so if you're shooting at night, I suggest you use that mode. HDR, um, ooh, looks like we're overheating over there because uh, it's sitting in the sun. I'll have to fix that in a second. Um, so normal, super night, HDR, time lapse, all right? And then, uh, okay, and then panorama. All right, so I'm gonna have to turn this thing off, unfortunately, but um, let's go ahead and keep walking through the menu uh, so we know some of uh, what we got here. Right along the bottom, you can see I turned it into uh, manual mode, so I have uh, some information. I have my ISO, which is set to auto, my shutter speed, which is set to auto, and I can kind of adjust those uh, with this slider on the side. So uh, depending on how you want uh, to shoot things, right, that's my ISO. I got my shutter, right? And it, it's kind of odd because it starts at auto and you slide up from there, um, but yeah. All right, I'm gonna turn this off, let it cool down, and then we'll get it up into the air. 
All right, so we've got GPS satellites. I'm gonna get this thing up in the air before it overheats. Um, so you can either tap the button on the left or down and in on the sticks. Ooh. Okay, now that we have it up in the air, um, I do have access to the intelligent flight modes. Now this is where um, it's a little bit different than DJI. So at the top we have waypoints. So I can set waypoints on my map and tell it to fly. I can track things. Um, so I draw a circle around an object and it'll, it'll follow that object. Uh, tap fly, uh, which is similar to waypoints, orbit going around in a circle pattern and then spiral to circle and up and then my flight modes cinematic mode tripod mode course lock fixed wing and search and rescue so these flight modes are definitely where it kind of gets set apart from the dji drone so let's go ahead and smart track all right we've got trace profile and lock let's do a trace Alright, so it does look like it's changing the video quality down to medium. Let's see, choose a target. And it uh, just kind of will follow that. Uh, but it's obviously not going to move. Let's take a look. We got waypoints, beeline using your map, in flight, and history. Awesome. Smart track, trace profile, and lock, tap fly. Choose a target, it'll fly there to fall speed. Okay, very cool. Uh, orbit, it's gonna fly in a circle. You kind of go to a point um, and then set the distance and then uh, spiral is basically uh, like an orbit, but it's also going to fly upwards. Cinematic mode, it basically will slow your drone down. Um, brake distance will be lengthened so it kind of comes to a smooth stop. Tripod is super slow course lock right um you set a distance it's gonna fly or you set a path right and it flies that path and you can kind of rotate the drone and the gimbal all right fixed wing is going to change the way that it flies so it'll fly more like an airplane if you're into if fixed wing airplanes all right and then search and rescue will show you uh drone coordinates on the map so you know exactly where you are and then you get some digital zoom options there so that's pretty cool all right, it's kind of nice that you have um, access to information telling you exactly what your gimbal uh, angle is, right? So we can go from uh, almost 10 degrees up to straight down. set my video quality to high I feel like I skipped some of these settings here uh, for the camera which are probably the most important all right so we've got auto uh, video size uh, video quality you're gonna want that on high now it does default to medium for your quick shots uh, white balance we're gonna leave it auto uh, color uh, you have general vivid or black and white metering mode uh, center spot or average, I'm going to go with center. Uh, video encoding, I go with H.265 versus 264. Um, it's just a, a smaller file. Um, I do like the grid lines. And then, of course, you have the option to format your SD card there. All right. All right. This is a, a good little drone. It flies well. I'm just going to take it out over the pond. Comes a nice big old truck. Very nice, and we're gonna come on back. We got a little gimbal shift there, something I've talked about before. All right, so hopefully you found this helpful. If it was, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you aren't already, make sure you check us out on halfchrome.com. And don't forget, we live stream on Sunday nights, 8 p.m. Central Time, um, and where we give away drones, cool t-shirts, and stuff like that. Hope to see you there. Good luck, everyone, and happy flying.